Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Tesmertuck, an OBGYN with the Office of Clinical Integration from North Memorial Healthcare in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm here today with my colleague, Becky Cooper, a registered nurse from Labor and Delivery. And today we're going to demonstrate how to do quantified blood loss, or QBL, during a vaginal delivery. There are really two important things to remember about quantified blood loss. The first is that we're not looking for a perfect, precise measurement. Rather, we're looking for something that's better than what we currently do, and that's a visual estimated blood loss. That's because we know from studies that visually estimating blood loss underestimates actual blood loss by 33 to 50%, and it's particularly bad for patients who have a hemorrhage or lose more than 1,000 mils of blood. The second thing to remember about quantified blood loss is that it has two components. The first is a measured or volume component that comes from the underbuttocks drape, and the second is a mass or a weighed component that comes from weighing any sponges that are blood soaked after the delivery. So now we're going to turn our attention to the delivery and the patient's bed. Most of the blood loss in a delivery occurs after delivery of the baby and after delivery of the placenta. So before delivery of the baby, any fluid volume that you have in the bag might be from other sources such as urine or amniotic fluid volume. In this case, let's say I did a urinary catheterization on the patient prior to pushing. So we have some urine in the bag. Here we have approximately 100 mils of urine in the bag that we're going to want to subtract off at the end of the case when we calculate our total quantified blood loss. Now let's turn our attention to the delivery. So quantified blood loss is really something that Becky and I need to calculate as a team. So I want to be sure she knows how much volume I have in the bag. Becky, there's 100 mils of urine in the bag. Would you just remind me at the end of the case to subtract that off? Sure, I'm gonna jot that down. Great. Now we'll go ahead and do our delivery. I'll clamp and cut the cord and hand baby off. At this point, we've lost some additional fluid with the baby, mostly amniotic fluid. So I'll wanna check the bag again. And I can see in the bag this time that we have just a little over 250 mils. Becky, would you please remind me at the end of the case to subtract off now 250 mils of fluid? Sure, I'm gonna write that down as well, 250. Then I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my case, deliver the placenta, repair any perineal lacerations I have, and manage any hemorrhage. Once the patient's stable, her bleeding is done, then we're ready to calculate our final quantified blood loss. Becky, would this be a good time for us to do our quantified blood loss calculation? Sure. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the total volume that we now have in the bag. And it looks like we're just under 750 mils. Becky, would you remind me how much other fluid volume we were gonna subtract off? 250. So 750 minus 250 gives us a quantified blood loss in the bag of 500 mils. Correct. So our quantified blood loss from a volume perspective will be 500 mils. Now we're gonna move on to the weight or the measurement portion of our blood loss. Now Becky and I will go ahead and calculate our blood loss that comes from our weight or mass from our silk sponges. Every unit should have a list of dry items posted on or near the scale so that you can know and can calculate the dry weight of the things that you weigh. In this case, we know that our lap sponges weigh 20 grams each and we have five sponges for a total dry weight of 100 grams. Now Becky's gonna go ahead and put it on the scale and help us determine our wet weight. So before I place anything on the scale, I'm gonna make sure that my scale is zeroed, and it is. And it looks like the total weight is 233. Again, knowing that one gram equals one mil of um, blood loss. Um, we're gonna take 233 minus the 100 of the dry weights for a total of 133 mils. Right, so then we'll take our calculated weight and add it to our volume from the underbuttock drape. So we had 500 mils in the underbuttock drape, right Becky? Correct. And 133 here, so our total quantified blood loss for this case is 633 mils. Correct. For most patients, if they're uncomplicated, you're going to want to continue your quantified blood loss for the immediate postpartum period, approximately two to four hours. But for patients who have a hemorrhage and lose more than 1,000 mils of blood, you're going to want to continue the quantified blood loss for a prolonged period of time until they're stable. Therefore, we recommend that you train your labor and delivery staff and your postpartum staff in how to continue to do weights so they can give a quantified blood loss. Thanks for your attention today, and good luck with your own quantified blood loss.